Insurance doesn't have to be a headache. Hodinkee Insurance is the fastest and easiest way to protect the watches you love. So, what are you waiting for? Sign up today. Here it is, Mike. Volume 10. So happy to see it done. <laughs> I'm happy to see it done, too. That was a genuine laugh. <laughs>so we bookend every issue with a page called Clock In and a page called Clock Out. Uh, and they always relate to each other. Um, and for this one, we thought it would be fun to throw ourselves a party. Um, and we made a sheet cake in the shape of and with a picture of the Cartier tank. <laughs> I love that we did this. I mean, one thing that we're trying to do with these magazines, as you know, is like make them more fun. Yeah. And we really wanted to help people see this as a party, as a celebration. Yeah, a classic sheet cake too. I love that Lisa came up with that. But really, maybe more than almost anything in this issue, deciding what watch goes on the sheet cake was debated r really heavily. Well, and yeah, do you, want a, do you want a watch shaped cake or a cake shaped yeah, exactly. <laughs> cake shaped totally. watch? Yep, 100%. There was even a moment where the crown on the watch was gonna be a cupcake on the side of the cake. I didn't know that. <laughs> and, no one ran that by me. And, and that was debated for a while, and um, so we really tried to figure out a good balance between uh, something functional and something celebratory. I also, I think that this magenta that we wound up with is super beautiful. The, this pink felt a little millennial pink in the end. And I think one thing that might be cool for people to see is just how many iterations these pages will go through. Sometimes it's rounds and rounds and rounds. So many. And when you look at kind of the breadth of everything too, you want it to feel like there is a bit of a journey and a bit of a story that's, that's being told in, in the colors in the presence and the negative space and all that contributes to it. I think another reason we went with this pink instead of the other pink was it read a little too birthday. And something that's kind of easy to imagine is that this is a birthday. It's not. It's not even an anniversary. An issue is something else, something special. So the 10th issue really needed its own kind of marker for that. For volume 10, we wanted to have a lot of fun uh, with the number 10 itself. So we thought it would be cool to start with this game. Can you identify the watch based solely on the Roman numeral X that we pulled off the dot. That's right, that's right. And there are so many to choose from. How do you feel about the headline? The X-Files, yeah. I love it. We, we debated, you remember, we yeah. debated between- What was the first one again? It was dial text with the, with the giant X. Right. I feel good about the X-Files. I think it came organically out of our conversation. We were talking about getting files for the X's and someone even said X-Files or yeah. organically. I wonder how many people will be able to solve this puzzle. That's a good question. I bet no one. <laughs> <laughs> I bet no, I mean that, that is, you gotta really know. You gotta really know. Some of them are obvious, I feel like. I don't wanna give any of the answers away here. But some of them are pretty iconic. I think if you know anything about watches, you're gonna find a couple right away. Mm -hmm. Where did you find all these X's? It was tough uh, getting these from all of the different brands is not easy. And, and so we weren't able to do that. What we had to do is source really high resolution photography and, and trace them as accurately as possible. Putting this magazine together is such a design effort, and a big part of what we put into this magazine is attention to detail with typography. And that's one of the beautiful things about watches too. Just the typefaces really help something sing, so we thought it was a really good opportunity to kind of highlight all the craft that goes into something as simple as one glyph uh, like an X. Okay, so One Swatch is one of my favorite rubrics on the website. It's meant to focus on up and coming collectors, watchmakers, just people in the community. For our 10th issue, we really did not want to get into some big nostalgia fest looking backward. We wanted to celebrate the people who are pushing watches forward. Just to signal to the reader, 
just how many people there are pushing the future forward. There's not one or two. There are scores of people who are making things better and pushing things forward. And so the, I, hope, I think that the breadth of this feature really is a subliminal signal. This, this list could have gone on forever. Yeah, absolutely. Ten amazing ones to watch in here, doing all different kinds of uh, exciting things in the world of watches. You commissioned this illustration, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, worked with a wonderful French illustrator named Caroline Andrieu. Uh, she, she's especially known for her portraits in the world of fashion. Just has a really wonderful uh, expression with simplicity and in capturing a certain amount of elegance in all of her subjects. And we really felt it was important, you know, knowing we wouldn't be able to get all of these people together for a photo shoot. They're from all over the world and they're very busy people. So we wanted to find a unifying visual force that could bring them together. Well, and, and this is to me part of what makes this a magazine story rather than a web story. Yeah. You know, the, this feels grander, this feels special. You know, the, to take the time to illustrate all 11 of these people is something you would only do for print. All right, so another one of our stories that played with the number 10 was this uh, one watch, 10 photographers story. What was the concept here? Get one watch, uh, which was this beautiful khaki field mechanical from Hamilton, and basically send it around the world. Went to 10 different locations, truly around the globe, and it was given to photographers who aren't necessarily known for shooting still life in the first place. Finding people who do conceptual work, finding people who do things that are very evocative in, in different ways and, and trying to find diversity in that uh, was part of the goal and just to see what are they going to do with it. We asked for a few different versions for each one, you know, vertical, horizontal, that kind of thing, so the layout could be as dynamic as, as we wanted it to be. It's really cool because a lot of these people don't know anything about watches and so it was their job to find the beauty in these objects. And I think when you look at this spread, you do see this variety of impressions that people get from trying to explore the beauty of, of this object. Yeah, and to me, you know, you would expect that the people who read this magazine do know about watches and what I think will be fun is to see just how many ways there are of looking at a watch. I love this kind of shadowy yeah. film noir sort of black and white treatment here. I also love this may be my favorite spread in the magazine. The Japanese photographer who did this last image basically believes rotting food, like rotting fruits and vegetables, are like a clock. Like he described them as a, a clock with no hands. Yeah. Uh, because they capture time in their own sort of naturalistic way, which I think is so profound and so crazy that we got to combine the literal representation of time with the figurative representation of time. Only in the magazine would you do that. Totally. And, and then, of course, there's the cover. You wanna go look at it? Yeah, let's do it. So, for volume 10, as you know, our friends at Tudor donated uh, Black Bay 58, which we could then engrave. And we wanted the engraving to be symbolic of our 10th issue. And you designed it, so why don't you walk everybody through what all these symbols mean? Yeah, sure. Uh, wanted something that felt timeless, but also very of the moment, and uh, something that could really treasure this milestone for us, uh, the, the, the volume 10. So started off with uh, an X, obviously the Roman numeral 10, and that created four quadrants. In each quadrant is another sort of representation of this issue. So on the right side, uh, it's basically the publication open with 10 pages kind of fluttering out. On the bottom is the Hadinki logo, uh, but it's backwards because it is a mirror image of the logo on the dial of the watch itself. So as you're looking through it, you would kind of see the logo going through it. The only difference is the O and the I are raised up a little bit, which creates a 10. On the left side are 10 O's, the O from the Hadinki logo. And those are representing 10 circles that are on each cover. And on the top is the Hedinki H icon, uh, duplicated, and with two hash marks in between each one to kind of just create 10 in hash marks. So these 15 images were all different takes of this one photograph. Uh, can you 
pick out the one that we ultimately used and explain why? Yeah, of course, uh, it's this one. And there's a lot of just, you know, real close similarities in all these photos where we played with light refractals, prismatic elements, and shadow to try and create interest. But ultimately, wanted to go with something strong and straightforward uh, to really kind of show the, the engraving and, and capture that in a really uh, simplified way that uh, where the contrast of the engraving really kind of comes out. I also love that we did this cover on white. We've never done a white magazine cover, and white is the classic magazine cover. And, and for us, it's a little bit of a left turn, even though it's the default in the industry. Right, the first seven issues have this great color, and then it kind of broke free in issue number eight. And ever since then, we've kind of just decided along the way what, what felt right for each issue. And, and for us, I think this felt like a reset a little bit. It felt like a celebration. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, it felt like, what is our path moving forward? And I think we wanted to create a device and a, and a bit of a, a viewport into the future of what Hidinki publication can be. I love it. <laughs>